Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video, I'd like to talk to you about blood clots developing in the legs. How to recognize that something like this may be going on, what are some of the risk factors and the context in which this happens, and one of the complications that may happen as a result of this, which is called a pulmonary embolism, or when one, of, one bit of that clot may detach and go into the lung vessels. And that can again be a situation that can be a little bit dangerous. So knowing how to recognize this is really important. Now, not everyone will get these. So, you know, you may not be at risk at all. But if you do have some of the risk factors, you may want to be uh, to pay closer attention to some of the signs and symptoms. So some of the risk factors in which context do these blood clots occur. First of all, when we talk about things that are a little bit more dangerous, we're talking about blood clots developing in the deeper veins of the legs, and we call that deep vein thrombosis, or DVT in short. So you may hear about this um, in several contexts, but generally these tend to happen in people who may have had clots before. So if you've got an abnormal clotting system in the body, uh, for example, you've got a familial predisposition or you have something called thrombophilia or someone in your family has that or other family members have had blood clots, your risk is increased. If there are certain autoimmune conditions which may predispose you to getting thrombophilia, again, you may be at a higher risk. Also, people who have treatment for an active cancer. So if you are being treated for, for the cancer, which is in itself already quite bad, if on top of this you need to also worry about DVT, it can be quite quite difficult. But People who have cancer have a higher risk of developing these blood clots in the legs. So it's important to know that. If you are carrying a bit of extra weight, again, that is a risk factor for developing blood clots. So healthy living can help prevent that to some extent, but it can be really difficult. And also, if you know that you've got varicose veins, so dilated veins on that you can see on, on your legs, again, that may raise your risk of developing a deeper clot in the veins uh, of the leg. Also, there may be some temporary things that may happen that may raise your risk on a temporary uh, basis. So, for example, if you have been hospitalized for a major operation or for another health problem or you've had major trauma and you know, you're in hospital, you're immobilized, you're in your hospital bed for a few days, maybe you've had a, a broken leg, a, leg, a fracture, you, you cannot move, that raises your risk quite significantly of developing blood clots and actually people who are in hospital for these sort of conditions will tend to receive anticoagulant treatment so blood thinners, in order to prevent the development of clots because they can be quite common in those situations. Also, if you've been uh, traveling, um, for example, in a plane, on a bus, on a train, and you've been immobilized for many hours, so very long, uh, long haul travel. Uh, this again can temporarily increase uh, the risk because you are sat in a chair, your legs are down, gravity keeps the blood there, slows down the blood flow. So there may be a higher likelihood, especially if you've got some of the other risk factors on top of that. So it's important to, to keep in mind, always stretch your legs. If you are on a, on a plane, on a bus, maybe you can try and get up for a bit, move your legs, move your muscles, contract the muscles every now and then. Remember to keep doing that to keep the blood flowing. So that can be really, really helpful. Also, if you've had direct trauma to the vein, this again may lead to you developing a blood clot because the vessel wall can be damaged. So for example, someone who's playing sports and has a, a direct hit to one of the, the main veins in the, in the leg may sometimes develop a blood clot. It not, doesn't happen very often, but it's important to know that it could happen. And just in case you develop some of the signs and symptoms that I'll discuss in a second, just to keep that in mind. Also, if you're on hormone replacement therapy so this, or hormonal therapies that are estrogen based, and this could be for various conditions or hormone replacement therapy, contraceptives, which are estrogen based, they can uh, elevate the risk for getting blood clots slightly. So just keeping that in mind and being aware of the signs and symptoms is really important. Also, if you're being treated again with chemotherapy for cancer, or other other conditions, this may raise your risk. And on top of that, if you're dehydrated as well, it can raise the risk. So these are just some of the, the risk factors. There could be others as well. I'm not covering everything here, but just keeping in mind this context of, uh, of maybe immobilization, a very severe condition, a recent hospital admission, operation, something like that could raise your risk of developing a blood clot. Now, how do you recognize this? Now, most of the time, people who develop deep vein thrombosis or uh, a blood clot in one of the deeper veins of the leg will tend to develop swelling in one leg. So if you look at your legs, you can compare the two side by side when you're set in bed. If one of your legs becomes swollen, red and tender or painful over the course of a few days or a few weeks, 
you, there, this may be an indication that a blood clot could be forming in that leg. And the pain is often des described as a sort of a, a soreness, especially when stretching the little muscles of the, of the leg. So if you're trying to extend uh, the foot, you might just kind of feel a little bit of tension, tenderness, especially on one side. So it's generally a one-sided event. So if you have swelling, redness, and pain in one leg, but not the other, that's developed relatively quickly, that could be a sign that a blood clot has formed in that leg. And you may require some investigations. Now, on top of that, if you are developing the complication, which is called pulmonary embolism, this is when a bit of the clot that has formed in the leg has detached and traveled through the circulation, through the blood vessels, and has been pumped into the basically the vessels of the of the lungs because the blood clot can detach from the veins the blood flows back up through the heart it's pumped towards the, the lungs to gather oxygen but if a bit of a clot has traveled that route and became lodged in the pulmonary vessels people who have this may suddenly become breathless and this could be very sudden so it could be in a matter of minutes or you know an hour or so you suddenly feel like oh i'm i'm a lot more breathless now than i was at the beginning of the day and I don't know what's going on especially if you also have palpitations around that time or dizzy spells or something like that and there's no other explanation you may feel really unwell suddenly something's not not right this could be an indication especially if you've also got swelling in one leg that there could be, could have been a blood clot that has traveled to the lungs and this is called a pulmonary embolism and this may require treatment. So in most situations, you may require some investigations that sometimes are done in the emergency room to determine if a blood clot has happened. And this can help you um, just recognize the situation and go early because the treatment done early is better. So again, just to summarize some of these signs and symptoms, if you have one leg that becomes more swollen, painful in red, and there's tenderness in that leg, there's, it feels a little bit not right, and this has developed relatively quickly, that could be the sign of deep vein thrombosis or a blood clot developing in the deeper veins of that leg. If in that situation, or maybe in another context, suddenly you become breathless, you feel that your heart's doing something funny, you have these fainting and dizzy spells, this could be a sign that some of that clot may have detached, traveled to the lungs and blocked some of the vessels there. And this may require treatment in the emergency room. You may be started on blood thinner medication. A lot of tests may be done. So an ultrasound of the vessels in the leg, or maybe something called a CTPA uh, or CT pulmonary angiogram, which is basically you would go through a scanner and some, uh, some dye would be uh, injected into your vein just to check whether there is any clot in the lungs. So some of these things may be done as part of uh, routine care to determine whether a blood clot is in the legs. And uh, if it's, travel to the lungs causing a pulmonary embolism. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, please don't panic if you develop some of these same symptoms. There could be other explanations as well, but I think it's important to just have some awareness of some of these main conditions that are not that rare, but can happen. So if you develop some of these symptoms in the right clinical context, or if you know someone who's having these, it may be worth checking that with your doctor. Hopefully you found this helpful and I'll see you in future videos. All the best and good health.